Welcome to the video, another Chromebook this time, and today it's the Lenovo Flex 5 from 2020. I purchased this as a grade B refurb and I've been using it for the last month. I'm going to take you through an unboxing and give you my thoughts on why this 13.3 inch convertible Chromebook could be right for you. I'll link you to the specs of the exact model I have here down in the description below. It features a 10th gen Intel Core i3 processor, 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. I'll also link you to all the other specs available including the i5 models so you can check out what's best for you. Let's get into the unboxing. So I purchased this as a grade B refurb machine from Curry's Clearance here in the UK. More on the price I paid later, but aside from not having the original box, I really can't fault the machine. You'll see what I mean in just a minute when we get it out of the packaging. Um, you can see it's just in this very generic brown box, um, but it's well packaged. It was delivered promptly using Royal Mail. I really can't fault Curry's Clearance. If you watch the channel, you'll have seen several other machines I've had from them, all refurbs, all in great condition. So let's get this one out and show it to you. If anything, it just makes me regret buying grade A machines previously because there's just so little difference or no difference that I can note with this. So the Chromebook itself is just attached to the back of this. Um, you can see it's just shrink wrapped down. It's really secure in there. It's all very clean. So we'll get that out in just a second. It's just a safety warning bit of paper on top there. Nothing you're going to need or actually bother reading, I'm sure. And then to the side, as you'd expect, the only thing we're missing, there it is, the, uh, the power supply. So it's a USB-C 45 watt power supply as you'd expect, so good to get a bit of charge on the machine. Um, let's get the Chromebook out itself and take a look. So just the final bit of packaging to take it out of. Now, this machine, it feels really high quality as you'd expect. It's got this aluminum lid or aluminum if you're in the US. It's in this graphite gray color and the body is made of ABS. So it's like a high quality plastic. Overall, it feels good. Uh, none of it acts as a fingerprint magnet particularly. Um, and yeah, you can see on the back the vents there for the fans, some of the connectivity on the side that I'll take you through in a bit more detail in a minute. But yeah, really clean looking machine, um, looks new to me. And you'll see when I do some checks later on, uh, more backing that up. Um, keyboard and screen protected in there. And again, all looking very clean and new. You've got those front firing speakers. Um, and there it is, it's got charge in it, it's booting straight up, uh, ready to set up Chrome. So let's take a look. So port wise on the left hand side of the machine, it features a charge light, a USB-C port for charging and or data, a full size USB 3 port, a headphone socket and a micro SD card slot. Over on the right, there's a power button with a built in LED, a volume rocker, a second USB-C port and a Kensington lock port. Now, as the Lenovo Flex 5 Chromebook mainly comes with a Core i3 or i5 processor, that does bring some decent power, but it also needs cooling. So there are fans in this model and there are vents underneath and on the rear. And like with any traditional laptop, that means some heat and noise. I'll try and give you an impression of the noise in this video clip. That probably underplays it a little bit, but of course they don't run permanently, but I did find they were kicking in fairly often and generally I'm used to Chromebooks without fans, so I can't say it was really a welcome feature. Uh, now, it probably comes down to how you think you're gonna use the Chromebook and what you might be replacing, for example. So if your main use is on the sofa, whether on your lap all the time, then the heat and the noise might get a little bit annoying. If it's mainly at a desk and it's replacing a laptop with fans anyway, you probably value the processing power over the mild inconvenience. One other quick consideration with how you use the Chromebook is the weight, and you can see here it's about 1,389 grams. That's just over three pounds. So when it comes to the price and how to purchase this Chromebook, as mentioned, I purchased it as a grade B refurb. I'd really recommend buying your Chromebook this way from a reputable seller, probably on eBay. I'd also recommend you wait until there's a voucher. I paid just £209 and 40 pence. So that's about 287 US dollars or 243 euros. I'll link to the eBay advert down below. When it comes to the battery, with any refurb or secondhand machine I get, one of the first things I do is run a battery test. See the link video for how to do this. As you can see here, this particular Chromebook only had one cycle on the battery and the health was at over 98%. 
Battery life itself is fair. To state the obvious, it really depends on what you're doing. General browsing, I was seeing around six and a half hours before deciding to plug in. But if I was doing anything more taxing with the processor, causing the fans to kick in, plus running the screen at a higher brightness and perhaps using the backlit keyboard, I'll show you more on that later, it could be closer to five hours before I feel the need to plug in. So your mileage may vary. As expected, I found the Flex 5 Chromebook worked well with my Charmas power bank that I recently reviewed, powering it on the go if I needed some extra power as I worked throughout the day. I'll link to the video down below in the description and above. So the speakers are either side of the keyboard, forward facing, which is great if you're using the Chromebook in a traditional way, but they are a bit tinny. Here's an example of some audio from the end of my video on the HP 11a Chromebook, so you get to hear my voice plus the outro music that you'll also hear at the end of this video, so you can compare it. Definitely worth considering. With that said, please do consider giving the video a like if you've enjoyed it. It does mean a lot. Please also consider subscribing to the channel if you're into your Chromebooks and budget tech. And go ahead now and check out what else is on the channel that you might want to watch. Cheers. The keyboard is backlit in a blue colour which is a really great feature to have included on this slightly more premium Chromebook. Just remember to avoid any of the Celeron processor variations of the model because it won't have it. You can control that by holding the Alt key and using the screen brightness keys like so. The keyboard feels really nice to type on, good key travel and good response. I'll give you an example of it now. And although the trackpad is plastic, I found it well positioned and also responsive enough for everyday use. Connectivity wise, I found the Flex 5 to be solid and reliable with Bluetooth 5 connecting things like my PS4 gamepad was quick and stable. And the same goes for file transfers. They were seemingly faster than on other Chromebooks I've tested. The webcam does have a manual privacy shutter which is nice, mine still had the protective sticker over it and you can see here how you slide it left and right to open or close it. The quality of the camera isn't amazing, here's a picture of some obligatory YouTube plants as taken on it. It's 720p, it'll do the job for video calls. The screen itself is really nice, it can go nice and bright, it's very clear, it's very responsive with touch. Uh, it is a full HD touch screen of course. The bezel at the bottom is a little bit thick which is a bit disappointing but around the sides and the top it's quite thin as you can see. And of course as it's convertible two in one you can use it in multiple form factors as I'm showing you here. Uh, just bear in mind that the speakers are on top of the keyboard as I've already shown you. But yeah really uh, flexible hence the name but it's a great design, it's very practical, good for movies, good for productivity. For a quick point of reference, you may have seen my video on the younger sibling to this device, the Flex 3 Chromebook. I'll link that down below and above, but here are some shots to give you a comparison in size. Now remember the Flex 3 is an 11.6 inch screen compared to this 13.3 inch screen, but due to the large bezels on the Flex 3 or around it, the footprint isn't too different between the two devices. You actually get more connectivity with dual USB-A ports as well as C on the Flex 3, but it is a different offering compared to this device, which is definitely more premium. So to wrap up and conclude, who is this Chromebook for? Well, the Flex 5, I think, really suits somebody who's going to use it at a desk, who's looking for that extra power that the i3 or i5 processors can give, isn't bothered by those fans kicking in. So perhaps if you're replacing a Windows laptop or if you're a student or going to be working from home and, as I say, mainly working at a desk, wanting something for productivity, this is probably the Chromebook for you. If you're wanting something where you're sat on the sofa just to browse the old website, then maybe this isn't the one to go for. Um, it's definitely a more premium machine. Look out, see if you can get it for a decent price as well. But yeah, highly recommended. If you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do consider a subscribe to the channel. Cheers.